Awesome. So we are here today with Peter Switzer. Um, you're in charge of exactly what in detail? I, I feel like I lose track of it every year. Well, my role here at the company is director of maintenance and construction. So maintaining the, the park, all of the rides, the buildings, the, the grounds, etc., and then constructing new uh, rides, attractions, facilities, etc. Awesome. So we're here obviously because we have Alp and Fury, a world record breaker we're hearing with the most inversions on a launch coaster in the world. That's correct. Um, Alp and Fury is truly an engineering marvel and I love how it shocked us all in the coaster community. Nice. With projects like this and the location that this project occupies, what went into project planning, project development, and now project implementation? So, um, project planning, we obviously plan a few years out and we looked at a few different options. We really wanted to do something with the mountain again and uh, it, it took a bit of, um, I don't know how to say it, uh, figuring I guess, um, figuring out how we could make it work. Um, as you know, we've got multiple attractions and facilities in the mountain now. Um, so trying to thread that needle to find the sweet spot um, took a bit of effort, but we were able to figure it out. And once we had that, we, we reached out to multiple uh, ride manufacturers for proposals um, of what they could deliver and when they could deliver it. Um, and after that, we settled on one manufacturer, Premier Rides, out of Baltimore. And um, we got into the into the nitty gritty of, um, of engineering it at that point. So. Now we're into the construction phase of that project and building the foundations, the track is being manufactured, columns are being manufactured, trains are in production. Um, and uh, yeah, once all the pieces come together, we'll assemble it and, and get it ready to run. And lots of runway left to go, so. <laughs> awesome. So Wonderland is obviously one of the most attended seasonal theme parks in North America. Um, there's two train operations on this ride that we see. I was wondering if you could comment on if there would be a third train possibly off-site for maintenance purposes if a train ever needed to be transferred off. We did explore um, the possibility of a third train from two perspectives. One from a ride capacity and throughput point of view and the other one was from a reliability perspective. And on both points we decided to stay with two trains. So from a ride capacity perspective, the ride is very fast, it's very quick. Um, we don't have a long lift hill um, to take up one block, so we've settled on two trains for that. Um, with a hourly capacity of just around a thousand people per hour, we feel we can achieve that um, on par with Behemoth and Leviathan and Yukon Striker. So, um, having a third train for reliability purposes, the trains are service proven. Um, we don't have any concerns about that. We're quite happy with what we. Uh, will receive and what we expect to have. So so yeah, we'll have two trains. Awesome. Are you able to comment on the capacity and if there were any design changes to these premier trains versus other uh, premier rides? So with the um, these trains from premier, we did ask to have some changes made. So we don't have the comfort colors. Uh, we don't have seat belts. Um, we've modified um, some other elements. There are some tow boards along the side of the train that we've removed. We've gone with a tilting platform on the station, similar to Snoopy's Racing Railway, to um, improve the ride envelope so that um, we could eliminate that tow board. So having the tow board is an impedance to, or impediment sorry, to get people on and off the train, and we think that that'll help to speed up um, the loading and unloading. So. There's some other minor changes that you right. may notice or may not. Awesome. Those are, those are the mains. Perfect. Um, so, with Wonderland choosing to add fire elements slash special effects, I'm assuming this means there will be a pyrotechnic on site. With that in mind, could we see some special effects return to other attractions like Backlot? So, yeah, we will have a flame effect off the roof of the mountain. Um, we haven't settled on where or how many of those features there will be. Um, that's still in development. Um, we are not looking to return anything to Backlot Stunt Coaster at this time. So. Okay, awesome. Uh, will the tunnel look like it did in the animation, closed off? So that tunnel, um, I call it a theatrical finish inside, is still in development. We do have some 
uh, concepts that we're working on. We've ordered some materials. Once the materials arrive, we're going to mock some things up in our workshops. Um, our intent is to try and deliver similar to what's on the on the uh, in the video. Yeah. Perfect. Awesome. That's our intent. But uh, lots of lots of work left to be done, right? So. Um. Did the initial idea of Elpen Fury have nine inversions, or did it grow or decrease uh, based off of Wonderland's requests? No, um, the the development of the ride, um, we wanted something different that we didn't have elsewhere um, in the park. So we wanted something to be thrilling and exciting, and and have that signature launch out of the out of the roof of the mountain. We arrived on nine inversions through that development process. Um, it wasn't a must-have at the beginning of the process. But. Okay, perfect. Okay, so this one I really wanted to know personally myself, um, but currently they're doing the footings inside Wonder Mountain, um, and I wanted to know on the specific level that they enter the the, the mountain. What do you mean, the construction crew or the track? Uh, the construction crew. Okay. How are they digging those footings with the cement? And if I'm not mistaken, there's two levels? So that yeah, the, well, the mountain's made up of multiple levels. Yeah. So we've got a, what we call the zero level, the, the ground floor inside the mountain. It's about 15 feet below the street level. And then there's intermediate level, sort of like a, a donut ring around that lower level. Um, that'll be almost a ramp where the, where the track goes down inside. So we're bringing concrete trucks in from the southeast entrance. Um, that's the one we were working on this past winter. That's where materials, steel, concrete, backfill materials, um, are coming in and out, um, sort of behind restaurants. Area. Awesome. And uh, is there a level below that level we're seeing in Tunnel 3, or the newly cut tunnel under Thunder Run? Is there a level? Like a, so the level we see, that, that concrete slab, is there a level below that? I don't know the concrete slab you're referring to. But. Uh, so the tunnel across from Clockworks? Oh, yeah. Where the, it'll That's go in the north entrance or the is north that, tunnel? Yeah. yeah, is that the lowest level that we see? When you look down into the mountain, that is the lowest. Yeah. Oh, okay. It doesn't go deeper than that. That answers a lot of my confusion. Okay. <laughs> um, so I guess a, a, a question that everyone wants to know, um, and most likely a no, is: Is this ride going to be a Winterfest attraction, possibly? No, it won't. No. no. Okay. We won't. I mean, most rides can't run below a certain temperature, and once we get snow and ice on the track, it's like it's not. The Winterfest event's not meant for that type of uh, operation anyway. It, it's more meant for the shows and the, the food and the, the skating and the lights and all that. Of course. Um, so on this topic of construction, Alpen Fury travels through and around and above and below a lot of other coasters, specifically around Vortex. Um, what is the process that is going to need to be take, to take place to lay the track in a lot of these constricted areas? Well, I call it building a ship inside a bottle. It's a, it's a puzzle, really, um, and we need to be strategic with the, uh, the, the sequence of installation. Um, but we need to build stuff that is sort of in, in deep, and then we sort of work our way back out again. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just lots of planning, really. Wow. Are you going to have to remove any of the current pieces on current coasters to make way, or no? No. Oh wow. Yeah, we can work over and under um, everything. So That's insane. Have to come out. Yukon Striker, you know, we had to remove a piece of vortex to build that tunnel, um, but there was no other way to do it other than the method we used. Awesome. Um, curious minds are wondering if there were any other specific locations um, being considered for the 2025 coaster, or if this was that location the entire time. Well. With any project we do, we look at all the options. So um, we did look at other sites in the park, and including the one that we settled on. Um, but that's our that's our approach with anything we do. We don't we don't just look at one one option. We, we look at all of them. So. Awesome. Uh, when can we expect track and supports to arrive? If you're able to touch on that, it'll be in September. Um, the track is in production. Uh, has been in production for some time. I've been to the factory to look at the production. Um, but yeah, that's that's the plan. I don't have a firm date on what day in September, but it'll be sometime in September. Awesome. Uh, and are you able to provide any details of the queue line setup and if the ride will have lockers or netting or uh, Yukon bin? So the queuing, 
will um, be on a lower level. Obviously, there's some staircases to get people up. There's, the platform is about 7.3 meters above the street. Um, there will be a, a regular entrance, a fast lane entrance, a, uh, a single rider entrance, and then a barrier-free entrance for guests with disabilities. Um, the queue line will be sort of between the fly and this station building. Um, we're building it for about a one hour wait. We don't typically build the queues much bigger than that. Um, it'll be overflow uh, for the first couple of years and, and then after that it will be appropriate for what we expect. Um, was there a second part to that? Yeah, uh, is the ride going to have a, a, loose art, a strict oh, loose right. article? So yeah, we're exploring a, a an overhead bin system like we have at Yukon Striker to transport people's loose articles from the loading side to the unloading side. Um, our, our intent is that nobody takes any loose articles um, so that we can avoid having netting over the midways um, and people can ride without worry of losing their keys or their glasses or their phone or, or whatever. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time. Um, and yeah, can't wait to ride. All right, thank you. All righty, we're back here with Grace Beacock. Uh, we have a little bit of an update you were telling us about Alpen Fury. It's now a world record breaking coaster. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it always was, but we just uh, confirmed it. So, um, yeah, because we like to have new things to talk about all the time. We're just dragging it out. Uh, Alpen Fury is going to be world record breaking um, because it will have the most inversions for a launch coaster anywhere in the world. So, we're very excited about that. <laughs> I can see the reactions online. Everyone's concerned about the amount of inversions. You're going to need like sick buckets on the outside. Ah, uh, well, I'll go on it. If I'm fine, everybody can ride it. So, I'll be the test. <laughs> Alrighty, so we're going to ask a, a few questions because you guys have announced a few more things. Uh, so it looks like Canada's Wonderland has introduced Demons of the Deep. Gosh. I was wondering if you could provide any details on this new maze and where it might be located. Yes, yeah, so Demons of the Deep is our new indoor maze coming to Halloween Haunt this year. And uh, this is going to be in Action Theatre, right beside Spirit Manor. And um, the theme there is... Well, some creepy scientist has this underwater lab that uh, where he was doing all kinds of experiments and trying to make mutant sea creatures and humans and whatnot, but the something went terribly wrong and the creatures took over. Oh. And so the place has been abandoned for a few years, but we're going to be sending our guests into <laughs> it because why not, right? So they're going to go explore this underwater creepy science lab. Awesome. Yes. That sounds amazing. Um, so I asked you an email, but I thought we'd get it in video. Will Alpen Fury have fast lane? Yes, it will. There's going to be a multi queue system. So for fast lane, single rider, and of course, we're going to have a barrier free access for people with that need accommodations. Perfect. Um, Canada's Wonderland has made a lot of enhancements around the park this season and moving into next from the lighthouse to front gate including an enhanced themed snack buildings um, and the Grand World Eatery. I was wondering if you could touch on these upgrades and the direction Canada's Wonderland is headed with themed areas. Sure, well, you know, the park was built in the early 80s, uh, so it's getting up there in age and you need to take care of the infrastructure and the buildings. You need to be... Um, I think responsive too to the changing guest experience. You know, um, front gate in the past got bottlenecked and we needed to improve on that and find new ways to, you know, increase throughput. Um, we want people enjoying their day right from the start, not having to wait in the long line. So, you know, we have to look at where we can bring those solutions. Um, touching up buildings, like I said, they're, they've, most of them have been here since 1981. Uh, so where we need that love, we're trying to put it in. You can't do it all in one year, so it's it's over a bunch of years that that has to happen. Um, and as you've seen, we're getting back to the, the original theme with Grand World Eatery over at Grand World Expo, uh, you know, bringing some life into Alpenfest and officially designating that an area and going back to the roots of it being, you know, German-Swiss Alp-themed area. Um, Medieval Fair with that, you know, awesome castaways uh, lighthouse. I think it just it makes a difference for people. It may not all be a big attraction that's coming in. I know everybody wants a roller coaster every year, but um, we've got to put our, our money into these other things as well because overall it affects the entire guest experience. So, and I think that's important. Of course. Alpenfest seems like the perfect location for an event like Oktoberfest. Will the, th uh, will the park think about holding Oktoberfest in the newly themed area next season? 
Uh, I think there's going to be a lot of potential for things up there because I think it'll be a fun area. Um, the space might be an issue. Um, you know, in order to have, you know, tables for food, um, I think that's got to be considered because uh, that is a, a thoroughfare for people to get through to the rest of the areas of the park at the back. So those things have to be weighted. You know, we, we did have um, some of our food festivals, international food festivals on International Street one year, yeah. um, which was really great for the environment and like the atmosphere, but it was a bit tight. So you have to weigh the pros and cons. I think Oktoberfest looks great in front of Canterbury. That's true. And it kind of has like a, that medieval vibe, that Bavarian vibe with, you know, Oswell Hall there too. I don't know if, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> That's <laughs> so, true. But I think there's potential for, for other events and things to be held up in the Alpenfest area. Like a fire and ice festival. Maybe. <laughs> Um, for a while, the Behind the Falls walk has not been used and been blocked off to guests. I was wondering if the park had any plans to restore this Behind the Falls walk. Yeah, at this time, I don't have any okay. information about that. 